Welcome back to Hypertech Voices of the Industry. We're here in SEMA Hall, right in Central Hall, right in the middle of all the action. So many people coming by. And Marcus Umlau from Toyota. I don't know if you've been here yet. If you haven't, you're going to see pictures of this because Toyota took the main hall by storm. And there are so many really cool projects on deck with Toyota on all levels. And you're with the, uh, you're with the off-road, right? With the truck side of the business. Right. Yeah, right. absolutely. Yeah, I, I, truck think of, I think of trucks and I think of off-road. There we go. <laughs> yeah. There we go. So tell us about your experience here at SEMA so far. I mean, this is a big, big area you guys are covering on the, right in the main stage of everything. It is. I mean, firstly, it's a great chance to be able to get that visibility and get that space because, I mean, we have so much to show. And I think it's really neat to have the space to be able to sort of talk the performance side of it with GR, to have our trucks, I mean, talk about the overlanding space, talk about the performance space, and then also to have Lexus also there. So, I mean, just having that real diversity of, I mean, being a full vehicle line manufacturer, having some really exciting, passionate product with the GR product or the, the overlanding product, it's really cool to be able to showcase all of it and have the space to do it and have some really cool trucks there in the process. Yeah. Now, I'm going to ask you a very difficult question. This is like picking your favorite child. But there are so many cool things to see, and your space specifically has a lot of really exciting things. What's your favorite? What's, what, what are you most passionate about? I mean, not just, of course, Toyota and the platform and everything like that. Very exciting, no doubt. But what do you see that is really exciting with the consumer, with, with all the people who come from all around the world to see your products? What's the thing that really has you excited? So I'm going to call out two two things here. I'm going to okay. cheat. I'm going to cheat. Yeah, call no, it's all right. Call out two things. Um, one is our new trucks, seeing what people can do with them. I mean, seeing our Tundra, Sequoia, seeing them modified. I mean, seeing what people can actually do with them as a performance vehicle or a lifestyle vehicle for overlanding. It's just super cool actually seeing people really go to town on that. And some cool examples with with those sort of trucks. And just seeing, seeing I mean, just the different character. I mean, just what can be done with them. They're great trucks to start with. And then, I mean, SEMA is all, all about going big, going crazy. It's cool seeing seeing what you can do with that. So. I, I've been out on the Overland Expo working with them yep. on several Bonnier with Overland and mm -hmm. traveling around with them and seeing what people are doing with the platform. That's yep. that's what I noticed right away because, you know, everybody you talk about talks about the dependability of a Toyota. Yep. But now the power behind the, behind the platform, they're being recognized as a real beast as far as, you know, go power. Absolutely. And, and this is the really exciting part mm. of it. I think for so long in the overlanding space, Toyota has been so well respected. Mm. I mean, so like Toyota, Toyota enthusiasts have known Toyotas go forever. They know right. that it's a great truck. It's reliable. It's capable. But I think now with their all new trucks, I mean, they're getting even more capable. And I think the two parts is we've got some great trucks and that's just super exciting seeing mm. the investment in, in those trucks. The second part of it is actually embracing everything that the customers do with those trucks. And mm -hmm. so, and especially that's where it's such a great synergy with SEMA in terms of like customers modify their trucks in terms mm -hmm. of what they do, whether it's for overlanding or off-road racing, whatever it might be. I mean, so how do we actually best partner with that? And one of the really exciting things that we talked about was our associated accessory products. So right. how do we actually bring in not just genuine accessories, but we say our customers are doing so many cool and different things. How do we go along and bring all of these very credible, very authentic brands from the aftermarket? Mm -hmm. How do we bring them in and work more closely? And this is super exciting that so the, looking the dealer can do that. Into 2023, we can expect to see Toyota embrace aftermarket parts and things like that to bring absolutely. into some of their products? A absolutely. So having that framework stood up that at your dealer, you can actually do a whole lot more. It's not just buy your truck. It's not just basically accessorize with genuine, but there is this whole world of basically really credible aftermarket product that have a great following as well. I mean, there's customer base that are enthusiasts. They very much respect these brands. How do we bring them together? And so that's again, really give a single experience for that customer. That's, that's really the key thing. That's super exciting because I've noticed uh, Roger Penske at Longo uh, in Southern California, huge platform. They've been really working on that end for a while. So mm -hmm. it's kind of neat to see that being sort of spread out to the brand worldwide. A a a absolutely. And, and this is where our strategic partnerships really mm -hmm. come into play. I mean, there is, like I say, so many great brands out there. How do we weave them into all parts of our business? Whether it's the product message, the marketing message, whether it's the personalization, I mean, all of those elements, how do we have a single game plan? And, and that's the really cool part of my job is basically how all these different elements come together for a single customer experience. So it's- It, um, it must be really exciting to meet some of the people from different parts of the world. Yep. You, now you've worked yep. on both sides of the world, literally. Yep. Absolutely, yep. But 
I think it must be beneficial for, for Toyota for you to have that worldwide perspective and see how it applies to the States as well as some of our overseas customers who I know in Saudi Arabia. These That's guys right. come over. I, we did the uh, Global Auto Salon <clears throat> in Riyadh. I was out there with Chris Jacobs and a bunch of guys, and and we saw, of course, Toyotas ripping yeah. around, and and you know people were really building on that platform, and that was before COVID. That Absolutely. was years ago, mm-hmm. and now what we're seeing here at SEMA, just seeing the trucks like you talk about that real high end customization yeah. and people yeah. using that as a platform. You know, traditionally. They're moving and sharing that same area that maybe before they had a F-150 or a Hummer or something like that. Yeah, now yeah, they're for sure. bringing in the Toyota product uh-huh. and really finding really cool ways to not only make it look great, but perform well too. Actually, yeah, absolutely. And, and it's really neat you touch on that whole global piece. Mm. And, and that's the really cool part of my job is that we say there's all this global experience but then how do we make it specific to the U.S. market? Right. And it's the best of both worlds. I mean, the U.S. market has so many unique things about it, especially around the pickup truck market, the large SUV segment. But so much of that is the same lifestyle that people do in the rest of the world, whether the, I say they hunt, they fish, they tow, they camp. I mean, the, the lifestyle is very similar. And so those learnings, whether it be out of Australia or Africa or South America, or there's so many learnings that come into there to make a truck that survives anywhere. And, and that's always been core to so many of our trucks, like our pickups and SUVs. But to actually say, okay, how do we lean into that? We learn from around the world. How do we really lean into that for some things are similar, but other things is basically then how do we actually build on that and grow on that? So it's, um, it's really cool to weave that DNA into all of our trucks. Now, how is Toyota, Toyota's known for customer satisfaction. You can look at the numbers. It's, that's a flex. I'll give it yep. to you because that's amazing. Yep. Um, reliability yep. is, is just, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. I mean, the numbers speak for themselves. Mm-hmm. You don't even need to mention it, uh, but where does that come from? Where does that whole idea of customer satisfaction, consistency, relationship, you know, that's what they talk about. It's, it's random. I did an interview with Roger Penske, well, Greg Penske, his son, mm-hmm. and they were talking about, you know, how the education they put forth in their dealership platform. They have yeah. uh, Penske University for those of you in Southern California, and they, they teach in, in a sales idea, a presentation idea. Mm-hmm. And it's very thorough. And I'm just wondering, where does that come from? Is that a worldwide thing for Toyota or is it just something here in the States? It's really fascinating. It is a worldwide thing. And Mm -hmm. I mean, fundamental to the company's DNA is respect for people. It's whether it's employees, whether it's suppliers, whether it's the customer. So I think that's intrinsic. I mean, that's in the DNA of the company. Right. When you actually talk about the customer experience, it's just really good business. I mean, Mm -hmm. the customers have a choice where to spend their money. If you give them a really good experience, they're spending a lot of money, trust is such an important part of that. So not just from the quality side, but the customer experience. I mean, being able to trust, whether it's the dealer, whether it's Toyota, the fact that they come back over and over again, and basically the fact that our trucks last, I mean, it's the long game. I mean, that that is what basically builds the value in the product, and that's what keeps the customers happy. And, And honestly, that's the thing that everything that we're doing in the world of truck is founded on. I mean, what is the customer experience? It's not just a transaction, it's basically, it's that whole of life experience, whether it's their servicing, whether it's basically their crash repair, whether it's how they upfit and they use their vehicles, but importantly, the next customer. I mean, our trucks last for a really long time. So the second customer is just as important as the first customer and the third customer. So how do we think about in totality, the whole customer experience? So just taking off something you just said, the trucks last a long time. They really do. They really do. (laughs) From a company standpoint, how do you make money on that platform? I mean, now that said, I've got we've got two Highlanders, a Prius, uh, Scion FRS. We're like a Toyota dealership in my family. <laughs> I'm impressed. It's, Plus yeah. some old school hot rods and things like that. Yeah, but yeah. I could take my FRS and fly around the track all day and all night and then drive it home and have mm-hmm. a blast. Mm-hmm. The dependability is key for someone who doesn't have a ton of money yeah. and a Ferrari or something like yeah. that. But moving into 2023. What do we, where do we see Toyota moving and how are we going to, when you have so many cars in the market, how do you continue that brand and expand that brand so Toyota keeps making money? Hey, absolutely. It's, I think the really interesting part, first and foremost, is Toyota really stuck to being a full vehicle line manufacturer. Right. So whether it's cars, whether it's sports cars, I mean, seeing the really cool product that's coming out in the GR range, the GR Corolla. The I know, I'm trying not to Supra, look because I know my mind. My... <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but it's so yeah. cool. I mean, to really double down and actually mm. have some really cool product in the passenger car space, right. in the sports car space. 
in the truck space to really grow that. And look, frankly, there is so many different opportunities in different segments. Mm -hmm. And you can choose to play deep in one or you can play strong in all. And really, we sort of say that our customers don't just have one vehicle in their garage. Our customers have a combination of things. They may have a truck and an SUV. They might have, they might have a GR86 and they have a pickup truck. So being able to offer the, ve the whole vehicle line with them, they respect Toyota, they basically have a good relationship with it. If we can give them the different vehicles, then that's really powerful. And growing our truck range is really exciting. I know I keep coming back to truck. I'm totally one item. Well, that's, that's who you are. My, 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 my job is to be the number one cheerleader of trucks. So right. Like no, a, no, no. First, I'm just leading it, you around because I'm... It's really, really cool to see that all, it all come together. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it's... Like, I take the truck guy and I start asking him about Toyota Worldwide. <laughs> no, I get it. But I, I'm just fascinated because it's, it's really exciting. I'm overexcited because right behind where we are right now, there's a huge platform. And you're seeing everything Toyota has. Yeah, it's a yeah. flex. It's cool. It's, it's, you listen, when you have something worthy of showing, show it off. Why not? That's yeah. the excitement about our passion, motorsports in general. But I just, you know, I think some things happen equally. You know, the technology mm -hmm. speaks for itself. Toyota, phenomenal sure. power. You see it off road. You see it everywhere yep. now because people can drive it to the track, race it and drive it home. Yep, yep. And then they can modify the crazy just because so many people are delving into making performance parts. And now with partnerships with Toyota and stuff, I think that's really cool too. I'm curious about how we're going to get trucks to people in 2023. Do you see that changing the sales model or, you know, maybe an online presence or how are we going to get people face to face with Toyota? It seems like we're just going back in that direction. We, we are, and look, I think there is no question that the whole sales process was flipped on its head right. during COVID. I mean, yeah. availability, inventory. I mean, it was like stating the obvious. It was a huge challenge, right? And I think there's a lot of things have been learned out of there, not yeah. not just from the dealer point of view, but from the customer point of view. I don't think previously where a customer was maybe w would expect to be able to walk in and buy almost immediately. There's a bit more of an expectation now, not just that they'll wait, and we're not saying customers will keep waiting, but now they will wait to have their truck. So they want to be able to choose their truck, whether it's how they personalize, whether they upfit. I mean, so it's not just, well, hang on, I got the truck that was available. They say, if I'm going to wait, then basically I want to make sure it's my truck. So how do we upfit? How do we accessorize? How do we that's, make it exactly their truck? That's where I was going yeah, with yeah. that, because I find myself looking online more just mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. during the shutdown, I got accustomed to going online and going face to face with companies through an online presence. So now with the technology, you can really pull out a you know truck, turn it both ways, look at yep. it up. It really gives yep. you a really good perspective. For sure. And I honestly believe, that's why I asked that, I think people will want customization like on the web, sort of order it and say, okay, show up. And they're getting more where they with a brand like Toyota, they trust for sure, for sure. that they can communicate through the web. And yep. I see that it's going on and, and just that availability. You know, everybody's going to deal with traffic problems and getting stuff here and there and things mm -hmm. like that. But mm -hmm. as we move forward, where I was going with that was, I think they're going to be able to look into getting exactly what they want yeah. instead of showing up at a dealer and kind of going, well, I didn't want 18 inch wheels or whatever, you know, or yeah, like yeah, yeah. the absolutely, little details yeah. and getting getting just what you want. Yeah. What do you think technology wise and and where do you hope to see? I know you can't. These guys are so tight lipped. <laughs> they are so because everything is tested and tested and tested. <laughs> I like and my job too much to lose it. So I, I know, yeah, I know. That's what I'm trying to think about. How can I get them to give us some dirt? Not dirt, but technology and, and yeah, yeah, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. Because I just know you guys are very, very secretive because you want to make sure everything's right before it hits the marketplace. Yep. What are you excited about seeing in, in let's say, 2023? What, what could we see in the truck field besides integration? We'll get parts. We'll get mm -hmm, people mm -hmm. involved in performance. But what's in the back of your mind? What would you like to see? Let's just say that. Right. That would be fair. Yeah. So I think there's two really cool things coming. Yep. What I'm loving to see is the proliferation of a lot of our tech and new powertrains. Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of our multimedia, I mean, now, so our Tundra, I mean, Sequoia, 14-inch screen, a yep. really rich experience there. So a lot of that, a lot of the powertrains that are coming out are really exciting. I mean, we go down to, to basically downsize turbo with basically with hybrid powertrain mm -hmm. like on yep. that. And these things are just monsters. I mean, they're like, they're way stronger than the outgoing powertrain. So it's exciting to see that roll out. In terms of what's coming, it's really exciting to see that, I mean, Tundra and Sequoia have already come. That's just the start. I mean, we have a whole stable of great trucks and they're really well regarded and we're gonna keep seeing that roll out. So I think the, the core platforms and the core trucks as they roll out, um, and like I say, I mean, we've got, uh, we've got a great Tacoma out there, but that truck, 
they, they won't be something in the distant, not too distant future. I mean, it's uh, we've got Forerunner out there, which is, I mean, immensely popular. I mean, that truck is just like truck of choice for so many people. Yeah, they've but, really but we'll they've really this. done some amazing. I mean, I'm a Highlander fan because yep, yep. I could throw all my junk in the back too, and it, it kind of you know it, it moves too. It's, yeah, a, yeah. it's a performance vehicle. I yeah, mean, yeah. in its own right, absolutely a family performance vehicle. Let's absolutely. say, and absolutely. happens to some yeah. of us. Can absolutely. you see his eyes? Can you? Are you watching his eyes at home? He wants to tell us. I'm so excited. <laughs> no, but he does. Okay. We want to make sure he's back next year and yeah. not out that's of right. work. Still in a job. That's Because right. I know they'll vaporize him. Yeah, a bolt right. of lightning will come down through the studio, <laughs> grab him out, and it'll be like, what happened? But I will tell you the one thing that mm. I think is really cool, and it was announced yesterday, but, mm. but actually really having a, a sub-brand just around overlanding. Yeah. And so we're, we've been really strong in TRD. And right. the motorsport space that's been super popular that's but, a crazy brand yeah and, and but but for so long it's basically been the truck that has to do it all mm -hmm. and so now we can really let that be the the crazy performance truck we can really yeah. let that embrace that piece but trail hunter is the brand that we announced i mean mm -hmm. and it's really exciting that it's not just about a product it's about a whole community it's what people do it's how they do it in the mm -hmm. overlanding space it is so much about community. It's really inclusive. I mean, whether it's male, female, I mean, it's it's a community that really promote getting out there and doing things and experiences. So for us to say that it's not just a product piece or a marketing piece, but it's the experiential piece. It could be at a dealer level. It could be at a region level. It could be at a state level, national level. I mean, really having Trail Hunter as a way of saying, how do we embrace and nurture the overlanding space? Right. It's super exciting. And so that's where we sort of, we, we basically just dropped it out. Lisa spoke about it yesterday. I mean, just, just dropping the name out there, talking a little, we're going to see that really grow. And it's all parts of our business that will really double down on that. So that gets me pretty excited because that's so focused where, on the customer. What you guys just saw was, you know, we often say that Superman doesn't need an S in his chest. He just threw that out there like, Trail Hunter's a very big thing. <laughs> No, it's, it's, it's a, in the Overland it's experience it's, and yep. Overland in itself, the Overland Expo, which Absolutely. I've been part of traveling around the country, and, and that is huge. Mm -hmm. Not to mention the space, there's a lot of available sales and income, you know, Absolutely. for anybody who's involved with it because there's a lot of money being spent in that space. But you guys are jumping right in that with both feet. You mentioned it like it was just like, oh, something we did. <laughs> Let me tell you something I have to know by accident about Toyota. She spent a lot of time thinking about things and he's not telling us the whole story, but it's good that you mentioned that because that is a big thing to see here and experience at SEMA. Right in the main hall, Toyota is taking over. SEMA 2022. And of course, the voice of the industry gives everyone an ear here. If you're at SEMA, drop by. We're in the central hall this year, next year, and for years to come. Hope to see you there.